trees are probably the last thing an individual thinks is going to harm them. But alas, we live in quite a peculiar world. On this little planet we call home, killer trees seem to also exist amongst a plethora of other things that threaten our livelihood. As unbelievable as it may seem that these trees are not to be messed with, Crezia Borgia, who was probably the most notorious poisoner in human history. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the 15 most dangerous trees you should never touch. Dragon's Blood Tree With a long history of commercial use, the Socotra Dragon Tree is an iconic one. This remarkable tree has had quite the economical importance for centuries. Within limestone plateaus and the remnants of prehistoric dragon's blood forest on granite mountains, it's known only from the island of Socotra in Yemen. Perhaps the red resin in its name is after what the tree is best known for. From the blood of a dragon that was wounded when it fought an elephant, according to legend, the first dragon blood tree was created. When it's injured, the tree secretes its resin like the unfortunate dragon from its origins. In ancient times, they cause sickness in excess. Local people value it as food for livestock, as feeding very small quantities of berries to goats and cows improves their health. The tree itself possesses a range of traditional medicinal uses and is known as emzolo, referred to by the ancients as cinnabar, thought to have been responsible for the intense color of Stradivarius violins was the dye in dragon's blood. Believed to have magical and medicinal properties, the resin was well known in trade before 60 AD. People used it as a medicine, a dye, and a pigment for art. Today, dragon's blood is still used for these purposes. With an upturned, densely packed crown having the shape of an uprightly held umbrella, the dragon blood tree has a unique and strange appearance. Known as dragon's blood, it's named after the dark resin it produces. From a small ornamental plant to a small tree, the dragon tree is an evergreen-like plant that varies in size which contains chemicals which may cause drooling, vomiting, weakness, and coordination in dilated pupils in cats when ingested. So be careful around your feline friends. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Sandbox tree. Don't play in this sandbox. The sandbox tree isn't suitable for home landscapes or any landscape, actually, considering it's one of the most dangerous plants in the world. That being said, it's one that deserves understanding and is an interesting plant, also known as possum wood, the sandbox tree, or Yura crepitans, is native to tropical regions of North and South America, including the Amazon rainforest, and is an evergreen tree of the spurge family, considered an invasive species. It's also present in parts of Tanzania, where it's recognized by its smooth brown bark covered in many dark, pointed spines, which have led to its being nicknamed Monkey No Climb. It also received the colloquial nickname, the dynamite tree, because its fruit explodes when ripe. The sandbox tree's large ovate leaves can grow to two feet wide and the tree itself can grow to 200 feet tall. They have red, unpetaled flowers and are white female flowers growing alone in axles and the male flowers grow on long spikes. Splitting into segments and launching seeds at 160 miles per hour, the sandbox tree's fruiting bodies are large capsules which can explode when ripe. One source states that, averaging about 100 feet, seeds are thrown as far as 150 feet from the tree. Another source states that ripe capsules catapult their seeds as far as 330 feet. If ingested, the fruit of the sandbox tree is known for causing vomiting, diarrhea, and cramps because it's poisonous. The tree sap can blind you if it gets in your eyes, and it's said to cause an angry red rash. Moreover, it's been used to make poison darts. <laughs> Jumping Chola, the one thing you can't shake off. Beware of the jumping Chola. If provoked by touching, this shrubby, branching cactus will anchor its splayed spines in its flesh of the offender. Leaving the victim with a prickly problem, the barbed spines grip so tightly that a segment of cactus often breaks off with them. With many short, fuzzy branches looking like teddy bear arms growing from the top, from a distance the jumping Chola or teddy bear Chola looks like a fuzzy, soft plant. You slowly but surely realize that the cuddly looking plant is completely covered with silvery spines as you get closer. You'll find yourself painfully stuck to a spiny segment that seems to have jumped off the plane, if you're unlucky enough to touch the spikes that is. Segments will also attach themselves to your leg. 
otherwise known as jumping on someone when stepped on and the segmented joint of the jumping chola separates easily when brushed up against. These segments can sometimes end up forming large forests of cuddly looking teddy bear cholas because they're found littering the ground around the chola where they're taking their root and growing. Although the plant relies on the dropped stems to propagate because the fruit is usually sterile, the jumping chola has flowers and forms fruit regardless. This plant has developed a wonderful adaptation to protect itself from hungry plant eaters and is known to flourish to the very harsh environment of the desert. The jumping chola can symbolize staying strong even when facing hard challenges in life and the primal strive for survival. <coughs> Manchineal tree. You can cry over this spilt milk. So the world's most dangerous tree is in fact the Manchineal of the Caribbean coast and the Florida Everglades and is a member of the Spurge family. The merest contact with the sap that its trunk exudes is so poisonous and acidic that human skin will flare up into a breakout of blisters and blindness can occur if it touches a person's eye. Even if the skin is wetted by raindrops containing any sap, standing under it in the rain is enough to cause blistering. In addition, blistering and severe pain can be caused by a single bite of its small green apple-esque fruit and can prove fatal. The resulting smoke can cause blindness if it reaches a person's eyes if one of these deadly trees is burned. The Arbol de la Muerta, which literally means tree of death, is another name for this plant in Spanish. Moreover, the Manchineal tree is in fact the most dangerous tree in the world according to the Guinness World Records. All parts of this tree are extremely poisonous and interaction with and ingestion of any part of it may be lethal as explained by the Florida Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences. Also containing the decorative Christmas poinsettia, Manchineals belong to the large and diverse Euphorbia genus. Causing severe burn-like blisters if it comes into contact with the skin, the tree produces a thick milky sap which oozes out of everything including the bark, the leaves and even the fruit. Moreover, it's thought that the most serious reactions come from forbo, a highly soluble organic compound. You don't even want to be standing under a manchineal tree when it's raining. The raindrops that end up carrying the diluted sap can severely burn your skin if it comes into contact with it. <laughs> Cerbera odalum, murder homicide via tree? Quite literally known as the murder tree and alternatively the suicide tree. This next tree is by no means harmless. Many people never really think of trees as being dangerous due to the fact that they can't move and as such can't sneak up on you. There's also a tree out there so deadly it's been dubbed the suicide tree. Beyond the occasional tree that kills a person by falling on them, as it turns out, though you'll see soon, the murder tree is just as apt a name. Because of its high concentration of cerberin, this tree is known as the suicide tree. Cerberin is a glycoside that's fatal when ingested by humans. Only in India and a few other parts of Asia is where this tree can be found, partially due to its accessibility and also because only a small dose from the seed is required for fatality. In Kerala, India, this tree is a commonly used method of suicide. However, this type of poisoning is rare in the United States, so rare in fact that there are only ever been documented one case. Another highly toxic plant from the same family, the Cerbera odalum, bears a close resemblance to is oleander. Its leaves are terminally crowded, with tapering bases, acuminate apexes, and entire margins while the branchlets are whirled about the trunk. This plant as a whole yields a milky white latex as well. With a green fibrous shell enclosing an avoid kernel measuring approximately 2 cm by 1.5 cm and consisting of two cross-matching white fleshy halves, its fruit, when still green, looks like a small mango. However, when exposed to air, the white kernel turns violet, then dark gray, and ultimately brown or black. <laughs> Silk Floss Tree Beware, this is not cotton candy. A species of deciduous tree native to the tropical and subtropical forests of South America, but the natural habitat of the floss silk tree is in east of Bolivia, southern Brazil, the northeast of Argentina, as well as Paraguay and Uruguay. It also goes by names such as drunken stick in Spanish, or in Bolivia, the tree of refuge or the sheltering tree. Often referred to by the same common names, it belongs to the same family as the baobab and the capoke, which is another tree of the same genus. It grows fast and spurts when water is abundant, sometimes reaching more than 82 feet. It's resistant to drought and moderate cold and generally bulging in its lower third. Its trunk is bottle-shaped, 
measuring up to seven feet in girth. The trunk is also studded with sharp, thick, and conical prickles which deter wild animals from climbing the trees. Due to its high chlorophyll content, the trunk is green in younger trees, which makes it capable of performing photosynthesis when leaves are absent. With age, it turns to gray. Angel's Trumpet – Not So Angelic After All Due to the presence of tropane alkaloids in the plant, which are noted to have hallucinogenic properties as a member of the nightshade family, the angel trumpet flower can be poisonous. With the seeds and flowers being most toxic, angel flowers only present a danger when consumed. A lot of experts will say it's one of the most toxic ornamental shrubs, so washing your hands is always recommended because you may have an adverse reaction to it if you have any of the oils on your hands and you put it in your eyes. For good measure, also avoid composting any seeds or parts of the plant. Angel's trumpet is part of the nightshade family, meaning it possesses slightly toxic properties, similar to the humble potato and even tomatoes. Native to tropical regions of South America, Angel's trumpet represents liveliness and energy because of its stately vase shape and potentially large size. So what's the drawback of these beautiful flowers? Like most things, the beauty of Angel's trumpet bellies the extreme toxicity in every part of the plant. Quite literally every part, the leaves, flowers, seeds, and even the roots. Serious illness or death can occur if the poison is ingested by humans or animals. Although the flowers and fruit like seed pods pose the greatest risk in gardens because of the concentration of toxic compounds, every part is dangerous, so be extra careful, especially if you have curious children that may find the flowers and seeds intriguing around. All parts of it are poisonous, ingestion could lead to paralysis, disturbing hallucinations, and memory loss. It can even be fatal in extreme cases. However, particularly in the northern Andes, various species were used by indigenous peoples and their shamans both ritualistically and as herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Namibian bottle tree bottoms up, but not actually, in the rocky, arid, and semi-desert regions of southwestern Angola and neighboring northwestern Namibia and southern Africa, it's where this particular survivor lives. Yet, despite all appearances, it is in fact alive. It's full of water to help the bottle tree survive the desert-like conditions that tend to prevail in deserts just like all good bottles in the desert. The fact that their swollen trunks make them look a lot like a bottle is what has gotten them their name. Don't be fooled though, it's also very much full of poison. Now, it does help the bottle tree actually keep its water, which was their plan all along. However, this just is not the kind of thing you want to find in your water bottles. Just to add that extra bit of pizzazz, the poison is so effective that hunters in the region used to smear the sap on their arrows. Funnily enough, nobody calls it a poison dart tree yet. Used by local populations as arrow poison for hunting, the plant produces a watery latex rich in toxic alkaloids. If it ever comes in contact with the eyes, this latex can produce blindness. This species is characterized by the thick bottle-shaped trunk, which is almost branchless until the top and can either be a shrub or a tree up to nearly 20 feet tall. The branches are few and covered by slender thorns up to 12 inches long. Leaves are covered with short hairs on both surfaces and are oblong. The flowers are present when the tree is leafless in the spring. The white flowers that cluster around the tips of the branches are characteristic of the family Opossinaceae. <laughs> Strychnine tree, pest control gone wrong. Native to Southeast Asia and Australia, providing benefits other than vermin control, the strychnine tree was used by the people of Southeast Asia by using limbs and boards cut from this tree to fence animals and to build their huts. The primitive hunters made arrow poison for hunting from disc-like seeds in the tree's fleshy orange-red berries, the bark, and the roots. Even though it's so bitter, it can be tasted in concentrations of one part per 400,000 Physicians in the 1800s added small amounts of it to tonics as a stimulant. Today, doctors prescribe controlled doses as an antidote for alcohol and drug poisoning and to increase muscular activity, even if this powerful drug may have gotten its start as a killing game. The extent of poisoning caused by these trees depend on the route of exposure, the amount in the person's condition of health, and the time of exposure. The proper operation of the chemical that controls nerve signals to the muscles is prevented by this tree. For muscles, the chemical controlling nerve signals works like the body's off switch. Muscles throughout the body have severe, painful spasms when this off switch does not work correctly. Eventually, the muscles tire and the person can't breathe. 
even though the person's thinking or consciousness are not affected at first. Intensely bitter alkaloids, strychnine and brucine derived from the seeds inside the tree's round, green to orange fruit make it a major source of the highly poisonous. Also, the dried blossoms contain 1%, while the seeds contain approximately 1.5%. However, the tree's bark also contains other poisonous compounds. Deadly Nightshade – The Devil Spawn Anyone who eats the berries is punished for eating his fruit. His? Oh, Deadly Nightshade was said to be the property of the devil, meaning that whoever consumed it was automatically linked to him. It also represents danger and betrayal in art and poetry. Nightshade is commonly known as belladonna or deadly nightshade and is a toxic perennial herbaceous plant in the nightshade family known as Solanaceae, which also includes potatoes, tomatoes, and eggplants. Native to Western Asia, Europe, and North Africa, its distribution extends from the Iranian province of Gilan in the east and Great Britain in the west to Western Ukraine. It also has been introduced or naturalized in some parts of North America. Canada and the United States to be specific. Containing tropane alkaloids, they cause delirium and hallucinations, so the foliage and berries are extremely toxic when ingested, such as psychiatric disorders, complications of pregnancy, cardiovascular diseases, gastrointestinal disorders. Its use by mouth increases risk in numerous clinical conditions, among others. Because they look attractive and have a somewhat sweet taste, the berries pose the greatest danger to children, and though this can vary from one specimen to another. Causing narcosis and paralysis, deadly nightshade is also toxic to many domestic animals. In humans, such as memory and learning, its properties will cause the disruption of cognitive capacities. Hmm. Gimpy Gimpy – Australian Nightmare Fuel Having been known to torture its victims for over a year, if its stinging hairs are not removed from the skin, the Gimpy Gimpy's active compound, moroidin, is so persistent that it has that effect. According to experts, the first thing you'll feel is a really intense burning sensation that will simply grow over the next half hour, thus becoming more and more painful. Shortly after this, you might get swelling under your armpits. Your joints may ache, which can be almost as painful as the original sting. In severe cases, this can lead to shock and, well, ultimately death. Stories of Gimpy Gimpy's notorious side effects, such as stung horses being known to die within hours are prevalent. After inadvertently using the leaves as toilet paper, one man was purported to have shot himself to end his pain. Even inhaling floating hairs can cause rashes, sneezing, and even nosebleeds. Considered the most deadly shrub in the world, with just one touch inducing up to nine months of unbearable pain, this plant, which injects venom into the skin, is obviously native to Australia. Gimpy Gimpy, otherwise known as the suicide plant, is found in the rainforest of Queensland and northern New South Wales. Those who have been stung by the shrub describe it as the worst kind of pain you can imagine, more specifically, like being electrocuted and set on fire simultaneously. When touched, the toxic nettle has small hairs covering the entire plant that deliver a potent neurotoxin, similar to that of a self-injecting hypodermic needle. The small bulb at the tip of this stinging hair breaks off and penetrates the skin to deliver a toxin. The tiny hairs cause excruciating pain in humans for weeks and even months because they can become embedded in the skin. In more severe cases, a liquid will drip from the skin. The injured area becomes covered with red spots joining to form a red, swollen welt. Rosary Pea Plant – Don't start praying with these just yet. Also known as rosary peas or jacquerity beans, Abris precatorius beans are scarlet red seeds with a black spot and not to mention shiny. A white seed with a black eye or a black seed with a white eye are seen in other less common varieties, including Florida and Hawaii. These plants have been introduced to other locations but are native to Asia, Australia, Africa and the Pacific region but this plant is considered an invasive species in the U.S. Outside of the U.S., the seeds from this plant are commonly used in ornamental bracelets, jewelry, and children's toys. It's also extremely toxic, as if the plant doesn't have enough problems due to its invasiveness potential. Housed inside is certain death, rosary pea seed pods offer an interesting ornamental detail, but each seed contains abrin, which is a deadly plant toxin. In an adult human, less than a single seed can cause fatality. Usually, what makes it very dangerous to have in the garden is children and pets that snack on landscape plants. <laughs> Castor beans, caution, do not consume raw. 
due to the deadly compound ricin in all parts of the plant, but especially the seeds, castor beans are extremely poisonous because they have a protective coating. The seeds are safe to handle, including industrial, cosmetic, and as a laxative. However, the seeds do contain non-toxic oil harvested for numerous uses. Consider cutting off flower stalks before they mature to prevent them from setting seeds if you can't resist adding this tropical plant to your landscape. Two more warnings, the pollen of the blooms is highly allergenic and the sap may cause skin sensitivity due to the presence of ricin, the toxicity of raw castor beans is high. Although reports of actual poisonings are relatively rare, the lethal dose in adults is considered to be four to eight seeds. This is the world's most poisonous common plant, according to the Guinness World Records, including humans, Poisonings occur when animals ingest broken castor beans or break the seed by chewing. Without releasing the toxin, intact seeds may pass through the digestive tract. Coconut tree. Are you coconuts? Ah yes. Aren't coconuts the perfect ingredient for death? Apart from being the perfect ingredient for pina coladas and Girl Scout Samoas, yeah, a handful of unlucky individuals have met their end at the hands of a falling coconut while, for most people, the worst thing about coconuts is their taste and texture, considering that hard-shelled fruit weighs more than three pounds. From that trajectory, falling coconuts can reach pretty significant speeds when hurtling earthwards, causing serious injury. Obviously, with any blow to the head, a severe enough one can be fatal. Death by coconut, very plausible. European yew, wood dye for you. Eating a relatively small quantity of leaves can be fatal for livestock and humans, which is why it's well-known poisonous plant. Due to the presence of alkaloids known as taxines, of which taxine B is suspected as being of one of the most poisonous, the toxicity of yew leaves is astronomically high. Taxines are absent from the fleshy red arrows, but are known to be present in the bark and seeds of yew, but are often summarized in books and on the internet that, except for the arrows, as all parts of yew are poisonous. The occurrence of taxines is in the seeds, leaves, and bark of the yew. Confusion about whether the wood of yew is also hazardous was created by this. With the exception of the arrow, the entire yew bush is poisonous. Yew contains numerous toxic compounds, but the most important toxins are taxine alkaloids, which act via calcium and sodium channel antagonism. Urgent medical attention is recommended as well as observation for at least six hours after the point of ingestion, if any leaves or seeds of the plant are ingested. Truly makes you think, doesn't it? How can the most seemingly harmless things end up killing you? It certainly has us rethinking how safe our surrounding shrubbery is. We can take steps to be just that tad bit more cautious so we don't end up paying that heavy price. Mm -hmm.